stockings. I have hand knit two pairs that I think were pretty successful. I'm really happy with them. I've also attempted to use my various knitting machines to make stockings. I have not really been successful on my flatbed knitting machine, though my circular sock machine was a little bit more of a success, which is why now that I'm doing an 1840s ensemble, I thought that I could go for maybe a little bit of a redemption for my flatbed knitting machine and knit two pairs of stockings in a day. <laughs> if you're new here, this is Engineering Knits, where I love to craft a whole bunch of different historical fiber crafts, although knitting is always going to have a special place in my heart. If that sounds good to you, please feel free to subscribe. I would love to hit 50,000 subscribers, and thank you so much if you already are. But back to the stockings. As you might have heard at the end of my last video, we are now back from the ball, and I am reviewing, editing, and releasing footage that I filmed in the chaos leading up to the ball. Why am I making two pairs of stockings in one day? Well, because that's all the time that I had left. I had to make a few interesting design choices just due to the time constraints, but I hope that you enjoy watching me hopefully redeem myself on my flatbed knitting machine and making some stockings with those. Let's get right to it. I'm really excited to be starting on the stockings today. Last night I set up my knitting machine and I knitted some gauge swatches and I let it rest overnight because I learned that when you take a piece directly off the knitting machine versus when it's rested for a few hours, it can have a bit of a different gauge. One of the reasons for that is when you're knitting on the knitting machine, you need to hang weights from your knitting. These are pretty heavy weights and sometimes I even add extra force by pulling on the knits as I'm knitting them. That can really stretch out the fabric. And when you let it rest overnight, the fabric can kind of come back to its natural state, if that makes sense. Now I'm thinking back probably is the reason why I've had some issues with sweaters not fitting me when I knit them on the knitting machine, because when you take them directly off the knitting machine, they're probably longer and wider just because of the stretching that the piece and the yarn went through in order to make that particular panel. In any case, for these stockings, I'm using a cotton bamboo silk and nylon blend. The nylon is pretty important on this machine. In the past, I have knit cotton stockings and I will link the video and it gave me so much trouble because it has no stretch and the nylon adds that stretch and the nice thing is it also adds durability to the sock or stocking. Uh, I basically was do was fighting the machine the whole way versus these. I mean, this was just hook tuk, as my grandparents would say, so quick. Hook tuk. I definitely started way too tight. I do want like a nice dense fabric but the problem when it's this tight this is the tightest swatch that I did is that when you try to stretch it it doesn't really have much give I'm really fighting the fabric this one at the top could be a really good one but it's slightly too loose because it's just a little I feel like there's a little too much gapping between the rows although it has a lovely amount of stretch so I went down one level from this and I've decided to knit at this particular tension down here. In the 1840s you aren't typically seeing the stockings, it's more of like personal feel kind of thing. Another reason why I went with cotton, it's harder to find sock yarn made out of cotton with nylon in it. At least that's what I found. I was trying to look on online for it. I personally really wanted cotton because even though it's probably going to be pretty cool in the UK at the time, with dancing and walking and the layers that we're wearing, I just didn't want, like, and the stockings are going to go up above our knees, I didn't want to potentially overheat too much. I'm not trying to make this like a timed trial or anything, but I think it would be interesting for me to tell you how long it takes me to make. I'm doing two pairs of stockings. I have a spreadsheet all laid out where all I do is enter the gauge of my gauge swatch and I've already calculated based on the measurements of my legs and my mom's legs how I need to knit these stockings. I'm going to be knitting them from the top down. They are going to have a hung hem with a pico edge, potentially going to add like a little bit of a lace border up at the top, and then we'll do a seam down the center middle of the socks. These are going to be fully fashioned hose, which means that all the shaping is going to be done on the machine, and we will have a seam down the back and bottom of the foot. Yeah, let's get, let's get to knitting! <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so we just hung the hem on my stocking. It's taking me like 45 minutes to do this part. It takes, this top part usually takes the longest because it has the most involved. So I like to do a pico edge, so I have to hand manipulate the yarn overs. Hanging the hem also takes some time. The straight knitting doesn't take that long. I mentioned before that I was thinking about doing like a little bit of a lace pattern along the top. I took out, if you've been around for a while on my channel, I have loved this book, The Art of Knitting from 1892, for a really long time. In this book are a few patterns for stocking tops. So we have designs for like fancy stripes or stocking tops right here where my thumb is. So I'm gonna choose one of those patterns for mine and try to imitate it. It's probably not gonna be 100% the same, but just use it as the inspiration. And this will require hand manipulation. I do have a lace carriage and a lace reader on this knitting machine, but it does give me a little issues. So it's faster right now until I figure out the lace issue with my machine to just hand manipulate the lace. leg of my stocking is done here let me take these weights off and I can show you so this is the start of the hem this is all waste yarn that'll come off when I'm doing the finishing we have the pico edge together with the lace I like the pattern a lot I kind of wish I would have done a little bit more pattern in between I also messed up <laughs> with this repeat but that's okay it gives it some character you can see here the decreases at the side that's what makes this a fully fashioned stocking. So I've worked from my thigh to my ankle. And I realized that this is exactly 60 stitches. I like it just popped into my head as I was working on this. And the reason why that kind of made me think, hmm, is that my circular knitting machine, I have two cylinders, one with 60 stitches and one with 72, but the 60 stitch one is currently set up on my machine. And it would be kind of neat to take this section of knitting off of my flatbed machine and then finish out the heel, foot, and toe on my circular sock machine. A few positives to that. Less sewing up to do because I don't have to do as much of a seam down the foot. Secondly, no seam down the bottom of the foot. It can be a little bit uncomfortable. That would take care of that. We wouldn't have a ridge or a seam down the bottom of the foot. I'm very practiced on the heel turns and toe turns on the sock machine. I have done it on the flatbed machine. And again, it's in that same video where I knit stockings on a flatbed machine a while back, but it's I'm, I'm less practiced at it and it's a little bit more difficult for me because of that, so it'd be easier. And lastly, it kind of mimics how stocking machines used to work. I don't think it was the case right at the beginning. I think it was just all knit on one machine. But later on in the process of making stockings, Stockings, they would do it in two parts. One was the legger and the other one was the footer. First, the entire leg bit on one machine, you would take that off the machine and you would knit the foot on a separate one. It was still knit flat, so you didn't go from a flat machine to a circular machine, but it kind of feels like I'm mimicking that bit of how stockings were made. Uh, this is my legger and then my circular sock machine is my footer. So that, that would be kind of neat, in my opinion. The only thing is I have to go grab my circular sock machine and find a place to put it. I'm full to the brim currently. I might have to go find another table. And lastly, I have to check the tension. Make sure that I can get the same tension on the circular sock machine than I can on my flatbed. And if I can, I think that might be a nice way to finish it. The second question is how would I transfer it between machines? Historically, what would happen, and the reason I know this is because I actually have textbooks on knitting machines <laughs> that I've read because I love knitting machines. It used to be something that was taught in technical colleges was the operation of knitting machines, calculations of yardage and tension and all of that. And they talk about the process and there would be someone employed, usually a young girl that had like a row of spikes where she would put every single stitch on this like row of spikes onto machine from the legger. Then she would carry that bit over to the footer and transfer it that way. I'm not gonna do that because that has a very high potential of losing stitches. I'm gonna knit a few rows of waste yarn. The waste yarn kind of protects the work. Before, before I do any of that though, let's check the tension on my circular sock machine and see if this is even possible. See if this could work. Oh, and quickly, just to hop in again. So I've knit the entire leg of my stocking. How long did that take? 
take me. It is currently 3.30, so it's been two hours for me to let, knit the leg of my stocking. I can let you know how fast the future stockings go as I kind of get into this uh, rhythm a little bit more. Anyway, back to the circular sock. Hello and welcome to my kitchen slash slight extension of my craft space. Nutella is my trusty companion as always. I knit up a swatch in my uh, stocking yarn that I'm using and it is perfect. So knit off the leg of my stocking onto some waste yarn, which is what we have up here. I'm going to cast onto this machine with some waste yarn and then I'm gonna transfer the stitches from my leg over to my machine. I have officially made my first round from the straight part of my stocking to the circular knit or flat knit to the circular knit. Two things to note, I didn't need to cast anything on on this cylinder. Um, in my future stockings, completely unnecessary. The second thing is I have a bit of a loose stitch here where I first started the round, but I'm gonna take care of that when I sew things together, but I'll just know that for my next versions of these stockings that that'll be much better. And I think that we're actually going to do, go straight into the heel and the toe. I just have to make sure that I'm making my heel directly over this mark right here, because I want the seam to be down the back of my leg, not the front. So the heel is gonna be formed right here. My stocking is fully off the machine. I'm super happy with it. I'm so glad that the circular sock machine to make the foot works. But now I have three more stockings to knit. This one stocking with both the leg and the foot portions took me about four hours. Is that, it's way faster than hand knitting, but it's not particularly fast for machine knitting. And I think that's because I spent a lot of time just kind of figuring things out again. Now I'll just let you know if I increase my efficiency a little bit, because I like to know about that stuff. I'm also not gonna go back and forth between the two machines. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit three legs and then take all the legs over to the circular sock machine and then put the feet on all of those legs. It's kind of like assembly line idea with this. Let's go to the flatbed knitting machine and let's knit some more legs. back in the kitchen at my circular sock machine. The first, my first leg took me two hours. And by the end of it, it was about an hour for each leg for me. Cause I, I figured out what I wanted to do a little bit more. So now we're on to the foot part. And for my first leg, I think I said it took me about an hour to do, no, two hours to do the foot. Um, and I'm hoping to get that down a little bit now that I've refreshed what I'm trying to do. <laughs> So with an average time of about an hour for each foot and an hour for the leg, I would say with a little bit of practice, it takes me about two hours to make one stocking, four hours for a pair, eight hours, although it, it took me longer, more like 
12 hours for two pairs of stockings. <laughs> they are knit, but they're not done. They're not wearable. I have to close up the toe, right? Cause right now it's just, looks like a fish mouth. <laughs> so that has to be closed up with Kitchener stitch and I have to sew up the back. One thing I did notice, and I noticed this starting with the first sock is, can you kind of see in that heel, there's a little bit of what looks like differing tension. I, I thought it was the way that I was like, cause to do the heel on the machine, you're doing short rows. So you're going backwards and forwards rather than all the way around. It turns out that I think there's something stuck in my tensioning mechanism. And on the last foot that I did, instead of rotating clockwise to do the meat of the foot, I went counterclockwise. And do you see how much tighter that middle section is? So I think there's something wrong with the uh, tensioning flap on the one that goes counterclockwise. So I should take off the cylinder and take a look. I'm just, I'm not gonna do that right now, but I'll make a note of it with my machine. I do still think that this sock is gonna fit because I, I noticed it. And rather than undoing all the stitching I had done, I just used some measurements and calculations and this foot is now the same length as the other foot. It's my mom's, here we go. So yeah, those are the, the same length. So you can see that they should fit the same from foot to foot. It'll just be a little bit tighter around the middle part of the foot, I guess. So I hope that doesn't bother my mom too much. Um, sorry, mom. I tried, but it's very late. We are currently T minus two more actual days left before the trip. But at this point, all that needs to happen with these stockings is just the finishings. I'm going to bring basically like the kit to add some extra details to these stockings. And the details would be to add our initials at the back. And then it would be really nice to add some clocks to the side. My Weldon's books even has patterns for stocking clocks. I have two weeks before the event where we're traveling, but I'm not at home. So I'll make like a package where if I have the time, I can add those little extra touches to these stockings if I want to. But for now, I'm gonna go to bed and I guess tomorrow I'll work on sewing up the seams so that I can leave for the trip knowing that we have stockings that can be worn. We are back from the UK. The ball was amazing. And I thought that it would be nice to finish some of the projects because I didn't get all of them done before we left. So as we were leaving for the trip, this was the state of both of the stockings. They were sewn up the back with the sewing machine. I will say it was a good thing that we had different laces at the top of these stockings because it was hard to tell them apart. I do think it's still useful for uh, me to mark it with our initials, my initials, my mom's initials. I am hoping to attend events again in the future and these would be awesome to wear to those again. So first things first though, before I started working on these, uh, when I unpacked my suitcases, I saw th well, they definitely needed a wash, right? Cause we wore them for dancing in the ball, but I did give them a really long extra uh, OxyClean soak because the shoes we were wearing actually dyed <laughs> the uh, stockings a little bit at the heels and at the toes. And I got them, um, I would say my mom's pair is basically clean. My pair, I think it's just fuzzies from the inside of my shoes that are kind of stuck in between the fibers of the stockings. So I don't think that those are gonna come out, at least not very easily at the first washing. Maybe they'll come out with subsequent washings. Let's go ahead and grab the instructions for adding the initials and I will add the initials to both of these stockings. Here is the instructions for marking letters on knits. This is Weldon's Practical Needlework and you can tell what volume it is by counting the number of stars in the front. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, volume eight. I counted uh, my real name initials uh, are MF. So M is nine stitches wide, M is, is six, and they are seven stitches tall. Typically, I also have antique stockings with markings on them and the markings happen like right at the top. But because I have such severe decreases happening here, I don't really wanna mark anything here on the knit stitches cause it's a little tough. So I'm gonna mark right after those decreases. And there's a few things about this stocking um, that I think that I've learned when working on my knitting machine. I mean, it's something that keeps on happening to me, which is that the gauge is off. Even if I do a gauge swatch, it tends to be tighter. And, I, and what I should really do is make a gauge swatch, take it fully off the machine and let it rest for a day, wash and block it. And then I can measure it because this stocking is also a little contracted. It's a bit short. And I've decided to do duplicate stitch. The directions 
do name it as if you are doing color work like intarsia work here at this point in order to get these done and instead I'm just gonna do duplicate stitch to kind of mimic that look. I was also originally talking about maybe doing uh, clocks for the stocking. As I was thinking about where to place them I realized that I would have to make a choice on the color. The embroidery floss that I grabbed were the ones to match our dresses but since that ball is over I might reuse the dresses at some point in the future, but I kind of want these stockings to be a little bit more general purpose. So I don't know that I want to pick anything at all, actually, uh, to potentially have clashing or mismatching colors. So I think I'm actually going to leave them blank. So no clocks, but I will do the markings for the back of the stockings. Maybe I'll compare them to some of the antique stocking sales that I have that have initials marked on the back of them. and my mom's stockings are fully marked out. I have woven all the ends on the back side of these. So these stockings are fully, fully complete. But before I show you the final reveal, I just thought that I would revisit the antique stockings that I own. So here are, I have a few pairs of them. These are all hand knit pairs and I think that they're absolutely gorgeous. These have some stitched on markings in red. I found that red, at least from online listings, the red markings are very popular and this is kind of a cross stitch on top of the knit fabric. I believe this is the way that you read it. So I did my markings so that you read it in this direction, but I believe that this says EW and five. And I believe this one says EW and six. So I don't have a matching pair of stockings, but I do have stockings and they are absolutely beautiful and both of them do look to be cross stitched on. So if you look at the inside of this, that's kind of what that looks like. Um, I was more comfortable duplicate stitching rather than cross stitching, but this person also made very neat work of the cross stitched on letters. So the other pair of stockings that I have that have a marking on them are these and I believe I personally would read them this way up. So the same way that I mark my stockings and the opposite way that the last person marked their stockings and this was not done after the stocking was knit. So the ones that I did and the ones that the antique pair did was after the stockings were knit. This was done while they were knit because this is beaded. So you can see that these are absolutely tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny uh, seed, be stit seed beads. I think those are what they're called. And they're incorporated into the knitting as the person is knitting these stockings. And this is what it looks like from the other side. Really delicate and beautiful. And I would say that that says C-O. Let me know if you disagree. Now that we are done comparing all of these and comparing the markings of the antique stockings to the ones that I did, I feel like the antique stockings look so much more delicate and mine look much more elementary in comparison, but I'm still really happy with mine in any case. Let's go to the final reveal. To the Victorian ball. We did hold these stockings up with garters. You can see they're kind of flapping down, but they really are meant to be worn with garters and they worked beautifully when I did. I did have to stretch them up and hike them up quite a bit to make them fit vertically. I think it also might not have helped that I sewed up the back. I didn't have time to do it by hand, so I had to use my sewing machine to sew up the back seams, so that might also cause them to stay a little bit more contracted, but they did work really, really well and I can't wait to continue 
wearing these stockings in the future. I think I semi redeem myself on the flatbed knitting machine. What do you think? In any case, thank you so, so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed this and you would help me work closer to my 50,000 subscriber goal. That would be amazing. And also we'll be back really soon with some more videos about more pieces of my 1840s ensemble. See you again soon. Bye.